Hi, my name is Peyton Dagg, and welcome to Project Strange. I didn't know much about engineering or physics, and I'm on a mission to learn from industry professionals about what it takes to build the structures we see around us, whether it be our apartment buildings or the bridges we cross on the way to work. Join me as I try to understand how structural engineering affects our day-to-day -day lives and what makes iconic structures so special. Loads and reactions are super important to structural engineering, and we're about to learn loads of important stuff. Let's jump into it. History. The earliest civilizations, such as the ancient Egyptians, the Mesopotamians, and the Greeks built structures using trial and error methods. The ancient Egyptians built some of the most iconic and enduring structures in history. They constructed massive pyramids as tombs for their pharaohs, such as the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Egyptians utilized limestone and granite blocks, often weighing several tons each. They employed precise engineering techniques to create these awe-inspiring monuments. Did you know that one of the most common methods used by the Egyptian to move giant chunks of limestone was to place the limestone on logs and roll the logs across the construction site? I think, probably, allegedly, we don't really know. They would also allegedly wet the sand in front of blocks to move them. The wet sand became firmer, which reduces resistance and makes it easier to move heavier loads. We'll learn more about resistance and friction in this regard in future episodes, so stay tuned. The Mesopotamian civilization, situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, Euphrates, 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 is credited with building the earliest known structures made out of bricks. Ziggurats, which are massive step-like temples, were common architectural features in this region. The ancient city of Babylon was also renowned for its impressive walls and gates, such as the Ishtar Gate. Ancient Greece's architectural legacy laid the foundation for Western architectural principles. They developed the classic orders, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian that influenced later European architecture. Greek architects designed magnificent temples like the Parthenon, featuring columns and precise proportions. However, their knowledge is primarily based on empirical observations as opposed to the engineering principles that we know of today. I invited a friend of mine, Tim, to explain to us what loads and reactions are in terms of structural engineering. The interview. What are loads and reactions? Well, basically loads are just a force, fancy name for a force that's applied to a structure. So you think of like cars, the weight of cars on a bridge, or even like snow accumulating on top of the roof of your house. Those are what we consider loads. But uh, reactions are basically, so the load goes through the structure and hits a point that we call a support. So a support can be imagined just like a, a foundation or concrete columns on a, on a bridge. And those reaction forces are opposite to the load and they prevent the structure from moving. How do you use uh, loads and reactions in uh, structural engineering? So in structural engineering, we uh, consider all different kinds of loading on a structure over the, the lifespan of the structure. So, for example, there's different types of loading. Um, there's dead loading, which is just more permanent loading. There's live loading, like people and uh, things that can move, like cars on a bridge. And there's also more environmental loading, which is like wind or seismic or even snow loading, like I mentioned earlier. Why did you choose engineering to, to get into? Well, I really, my favorite class in high school was physics and also just algebra, math, uh, those are my favorite kind of classes. And then also just growing up as a kid, I was really interested with building stuff with my hands. So like Legos and wood blocks, building things like that. And then just also like always having that inquisitive mind, like looking at a building and just wondering, how does that building stand up when we get when there's so many earthquakes. What's your favorite formula? And do you want to write it down? Yeah, sure. Um, so my favorite formula is actually the quadratics equation. So it's basically the reason I like it is because it's really easy to remember because there's a little song that goes along to it. Okay, can you sing it for us? I can sing it, yeah. So it's x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's easy as that to remember. And when it comes up during work, it's actually kind of fun to... Does everybody sing along? Uh, I asked our office just before this if anyone knew the song and they all answered no, so. And come on, sing the song one more time. Plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
If you had failed in uh, engineering, would you have gotten into singing? Uh, I mean, I play the guitar. Do you? I don't sing. I played in some bands in uh, high yeah? school. Did you ever have dreams of being a rock star? Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, as, a, as, a, as a younger kid, I did. Oh man, back in the day, I was listening to punk, punk music. Hey. Hey. Yeah. All right, so that's me playing a guitar slash banjo with a mic. Um, I'm a one-man band. I don't need no band. I'm at Coachella. I noticed you drew yourself with a microphone, but you said you don't sing. Yes. Um, All right, now draw yourself as an engineer. Me as an engineer. I set out a computer. Keyboard. Mouse. It's a bad posture. I usually have a few coffee cups here. Engineer by day, rock star by night, I think. <laughs> I really do like what I do. I get to see my designs be constructed and exist as part of the community, which is really rewarding. So I do like that aspect of it. I design a lot of stuff in Ottawa. I get to, you know, walk by on the weekend and see, oh yeah, I was, I was a part of that project, so. I hope the rain doesn't come anytime soon and washes yeah. away, because I think there's lots of really beautiful memories that were made here today. For sure, yeah. Camera. Peace out. So basically, for engineers and architects, understanding loads and reactions are crucial in designing safe and stable structures. They need to ensure that the structure can withstand all expected loads while distributing the forces effectively to prevent failure or collapse. Live loads are things like people, cars, the wind, rain, or earthquakes. Dead loads are the mass of the structure itself. Every load has to be supported and the reaction of the support is equal and opposite to the load. That's the end of today's episode on loads and reactions. A special thank you to Tim for teaching me about loads and reactions, and a special thank you to you for watching until the end of the video. Like and subscribe to see more of me and to see more of my engineering friends, who will teach us both about structural engineering. I'm Peyton Dagg, and this has been another episode of Project Strange. Don't forget to enjoy the process. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A.